Hi, I'm Lisa Sorrell and I'm here to talk about shoemaking tools and I think today I might be doing something completely unorthodox and possibly wrong, but it's working. This is a Tina channel knife. Right hand in case you're interested because I am right handed. I am going to use it today in a way that perhaps it was not intended to be used. I've only ever seen shoemakers or boot makers use it to create the channel for inseaming, but I'm not going to use it that way. If you're familiar with my YouTube videos, you might have seen a video where I talk about how to prepare an insole for inseaming and how I do a slant at the edge of the insole instead of a little stair step like shoemakers do. I'm working on an insole right now and the way I do it is I just eyeball, or you can draw on it if you're not comfortable doing that, about half the thickness of the insole and then I draw a line about eighth of an inch in and now I'm just going to cut it off at an angle to connect those lines. You can do it on a sander, but I've gotten to where I usually just do it with a knife because it's fast and easy. There we go, I've got the insole all prepared around the edge to where I've got an angle there. And normally I would stop here, but today I started looking at this Tina channel knife and thinking about how shoemakers and some bootmakers really do like to put a stair step here, and down and over. I started thinking about this Tina channel knife because it has exactly that. It comes down and over to create a stair step. Now the only way I've ever seen this tool used, and so that's probably right, I don't know, is along here to create the groove for where the stitching comes up. Maybe people are using it like the way I'm going to show you, I don't know. But today I started thinking, well what about if I went ahead and prepared my insole like normal and then just took my knife and ran it right along that edge so this is just running right on the insole. It's not trying to go anywhere or cut where I don't want to. And would you look at that? I have a perfect, perfect stair step on the side of my insole. It could not be more perfect, and it's super easy. Again, I honestly am not sure if you're supposed to use this tool for this purpose or not. I am sure someone in the comments will tell me. But man, it sure works well for this. Now I'm going to ease it out there. If I were a shoemaker, I would keep going and cut a nice channel here for the shank because I would be stitching through the shank, but this is going to be a cowboy boot, so the shank area is pegged and I just want a nice, a nice um, sky there in the shank area. And now for my channel, again, if you watch my insole video, I've talked about how I don't like using a tool like this or cutting a slit with a knife like that as some people do because I feel that anything that's a slit or a cut is more likely to tear so I want my channel to be round. Now I have always used this tool it's a stitch groover I sell these I'm getting ready to take them off my website. The only reason they're still on there right now is because I just can't remember to do it, but all of these are getting scrapped. This is the tool I've used for years, but evidently the quality has gone down and I didn't realize that until recently the one I'd had for years broke. And I decided to run up front and grab a new one. And it lasted like 45 seconds and then it just got too dull to use. It got all filled up and dull and I couldn't use it. 
So these are all getting scrapped. Don't buy these if I forget to take them off the website. They're history. I am switching to these. It's a wing divider. It's got a little groove cutter there. A little different to use, but I'm getting used to it. So I'm just going to run it right along there. Oh, I made a mistake. These are, they're like a wing divider. They do the same thing and they actually come with a little pointed, a little pointed attachment so you can use them as a wing divider. But they're called a scratch compass. That's what they're called, is a scratch compass. And I'm using the little attachment that makes it cut a stitch channel. Now all I have to do is pre-drill the holes, which is super easy because I can tell exactly where my awl needs to go in here. And because of that stair step, I can tell exactly where it needs to come out. Right at the base of that stair step. In case you're wondering, this is the 3 and 3 8 Carbone Awl. I sell other inseaming awls. You're welcome to try them. But the Carbone Awls are the only ones that I personally use. Because they are sharp and this job is no fun. If you have an awl that's not sharp. So an inseaming awl is kind of spoon shaped and it just goes in and comes out like that. And then an out seaming awl is more like a knife blade and it goes this way. It doesn't take long at all when you're using a baker insole and it's still damp and your awl is nice and sharp. Okay, I mentioned that this insole is damp and I've trimmed it while it was damp. And what that means is as it dries, it's going to try to shrink up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it tightly with vet wrap, which I do not sell. You can just get on the internet and look for a source for vet wrap. I buy it in cases. I guess I probably should sell it. If you guys want me to sell it, I'll sell it. It's like gauze. I like using this because it will hold tightly. It's got a bit of stretch in it, but it doesn't seal off the insole like rubber or something. So the insole can still dry. It's just not gonna move. All right, now I've got the insole wrapped tightly and now it can dry wrapped tightly to the last so that it's not going to shrink up. 